Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG fam show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. Today, viewer question, specifically one viewer question from Bruce Leaf, who, uh, thanks for the question, Bruce, and thanks for supporting the show. Really appreciate everything you do. So his question was about PPMs and about the level you want to get those at. And uh, we'll, we'll tell have the question in the video with you. I went over to Nectar for the Gods and talked to Scott over there, Scott Ostrander, and he answered the question, but he also went more into depth about PPMs, you see, about the uh, levels in your soil and where you want to keep those and why. So watch this video, and I'll talk to you after. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. That gets annoying, doesn't it? Doesn't matter. It's viewer questions day. We got Scott here. <laughs> this is the last time I think I'm gonna do it. Big Kahuna at Nectar for the Gods. I'm gonna stop that, but I just it just gives me joy. I have some viewer questions. First one, Bruce Leaf. Bruce Leaf. Bruce Leaf. We're gonna yep. get to your email today, Bruce Leaf, since you emailed us on the 4th of July, <laughs> so we don't answer them until the 6th yeah. of July. <laughs> so, uh, why is it important to reach and maintain the 300 to 500 ppm range for running nectar? What are the benefits and what are the consequences? It's, it's an interesting question, and it's not a bad question. I think it's just, it's misled. Uh -huh. okay. There is no reaching three to 500. Okay. Ideally, we see most people are in like the seven to 900 range in their soils, and that's the issue. So we try to get down to three to 500 in most cases. Okay. Now, if your plants um, are super hungry, they're consuming, they're eating everything you're giving them, everything's healthy, and you're maintaining that three to 500, that's the ideal. I mean, that's, okay. that's what we want to see. and. By that meaning, if I'm in the last week of veg, I've mixed up the whole program. I'm looking at a 1,200 parts per million right. in my reservoir, uh -huh. and I feed them. Uh -huh. Two days later, I go in there, and they're three to 350. They that ate. means they ate everything I gave them, oh. and they're happy about it. Now, if I fed that 1,500 parts per million on Monday, and then I go in there on Wednesday, and it's literally you know 900, something is not being consumed. Oh, okay. Something's going on in the root zone. Now I want to investigate why is it climbing. Uh -huh. um, the downfall of it climbing is now the pH is going to start to become an issue because okay. once the nutrition stops going in, pH starts to go out of whack and we find ourselves in trouble by either a salt buildup, an acid drift, um, an alkalinity drift. You know, depends on where we're at in the feeding schedule. So reaching three to five, not necessarily. Now, okay. If you've not fed your plants, you feed them once a week mm -hmm. and you started your soil at 400 and then at the end of the week you're at 100, uh -huh. you're not feeding them enough and they're going to be starving. So the critical mm -hmm. piece there is three to five tells me that that's, the plants are always eating something and they're comfortable. Okay. If it goes below 300, they're, they want more. They're eating everything and then some. And some. If they blow, but go below 200, then you're starving. So it's like the end of the week, I get to the end of the week, I need to go shopping again. My house doesn't have any food in it, but there is something I can find in my house to eat. Oh, you'll eat something. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that, that's what you're doing there. So if you see it at 100 or no 100, or you just see really low numbers, is there any other reason other than you just aren't feeding them enough? That's pretty much it. That's I mean, you have a genetic that is saying, you can't give me enough, feel uh -huh. free to give me more, and uh -huh. bump up your feeding schedule, or bump up your frequency. And... A lot of people will bump up their feeding schedule and then still flood them. Like if you're used to doing two feedings a week and it's two waterings a week, but you're feeding them to where you get a ton of runoff. Um, the problem with that is that you have to wait so long in between feedings. Okay, sure. So if I feed on Monday and I have to wait till Wednesday or Thursday before I can give them more, well, the plant is still actively growing. They're consuming right. that last food. Okay. So what you can often find, and a lot of people will come in or email me these questions mm. is, you know, I've been feeding 1,200 or 1,500 parts per million twice a week, but my parts per million are always 100. Well, because you saturate a 20-gallon pot, it lasts four days in there. Mm -hmm. The plant is eating everything. By the time you go back to watering before the risk of root rot happens, sure, you are depleting that soil of so much nutrition, the plant begins to starve. Mm -hmm. So my answer to that is frequency. Okay. So in a 15-gallon pot, instead of feeding them once every three to four days, two gallons of food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll give them a half a gallon of food every day for that week and I'll uh, build back up okay. that uh, the parsimony in the soil. Okay, so is there ever, and so if, if the parsimony are climbing, if there's not an issue, there will be an issue because of acids and, and, and pH Eventually, and that sort of in thing? In the soil, in the, okay. as far as the slurry, yes. And so what, what, then I assume it's a, it's a flush of the situation when, when, you, when you see your parts per million going up. Yeah. But so I, I saw my parts per million going up I flush to get them back down again, but 
have I most likely solved the problem or was there possibly something going on other than was I overfeeding for sure or were there other issues that may have been? There's so many, so <laughs> many variables on that. So you could have had a really cold night. You could have watered them with hot water or cold water one time, which shocks the root zone. You okay. could have had a die off on your microorganisms that needed a new cycling of microbes. Oh, um, okay. You may have overwatered three times, so all oh. of a sudden now they're not water. I mean, so the variables on that are just so steady hand on the tiller. Just flush it out and see what happens from there, and then look for problems. Don't be trying to fix something until you know there is something uh, wrong. If there, yeah, because if it starts to rise, mm -hmm. often that just means that my frequency was too much and my quantity was too much. Okay, so now I'm going to maintain this, but I'm going to feed them a little less often, uh -huh. and then just kind of go back and forth and find your sweet spot. I personally will feed every single day, but I feed them a lot less volume. And then once a week, I water them to where I get actual runoff. Okay. And would that be with Herc mm -hmm. or is that just water? I usually do that either on a Herc or a tea day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or if I'm just really lazy water. water. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that covers it. So, I so. and I'll, yeah. I'll touch base more with you. Uh, Bruce. Bruce Leaf yeah. on uh, your actual email there. You had a few more questions on there that yeah. I saw, but um, pretty much there's no getting to 300. The only way, reason why you ever have to get to 300 is because you haven't been feeding enough. So more often or more. Yeah. So, and if I did do, I see my numbers climbing up, I would flush. I wouldn't just back off of my feeding. I would back off of my feeding to do less, but I would also do a flush or would you just maybe yeah, like try to eat flush through Yeah, I mean, if it's not above a thousand, I would just water back through it and see if I can't get them to eat that food I put in so I don't tie okay. it up and get rid of it. Okay. If you're above a thousand, you're going to see issues. You're going to see tip burn. You're going to see edges being Something's crisp. Something's got to happen to get that down. Yeah, there's, okay. you want to tie that up and make it faster because a lot of times... By the time you see the issue, it happened two weeks ago. Oh, And okay. so a we lot of deficiencies move. weren't because of what you did yesterday, it's what didn't happen last week. Uh, so when you start market. to see stuff, you gotta get back and get corrective. Oh, okay. Um, and you know, with that being said, don't overcorrect. I mean, if you're at 100, don't feed 3,200 parts per million. That's not the solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feed them just higher, more frequently. You back up to it. Okay. And same with pH. If you got a low pH or a high pH soil, uh -huh. You can't go like you can't take an eight pH soil and flush it with four pH water. You'll kill shit in the soil. Okay. Okay. Vice versa, if you have a really low pH and you're trying to get it up, doing eight point oh water and you're still not feeding the plant. You're just buffering the soil, so the plant's uh, still not going to consume. And so anything. it's going to starve until it finally gets so you to the point where get the zone correct. So I gotcha. my biggest like advice, if you're working, especially acidic soils, if you're mm. working with a five two or five five soil. Feed at six, 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 seven frequently, you know, less volume more often, get that limestone into that medium and as it's, it will buffer it back up in a period of time. Okay. But just trying to flash it with sevens or eights, it's just gonna shock your root zones, shock your microorganisms, basically kill your microorganisms. So this is very detrimental to your microorganisms yeah. and not happy for anything else. Nobody likes a pH swing that strong. So okay. gently bring them back up into the realm. Cool, there you go. Okay, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. We sure appreciate Scott doing that for us. Uh, that's the show for today. Tomorrow we'll get back into the comprehensive feeding regimen. Get that going. So uh, that's the show. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. And if you buy anything while you're there, use the code OCGFAMSHOW. It's going to save you 20%, and it's a lot of fun. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good, it happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.